Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India everyone to our online NPTEL course environmental chemistry and microbiology this course will be taught by professor Shudha Guel and myself professor Anjali Pal we both are from civil engineering department IIT Kharagpur we have divided this course into two parts the first part environmental chemistry will be covered by me and the second part that is environmental microbiology will be taught by Professor Shudha Quell. Now, in my first module, I discussed about the acids, bases, and salts. In the second module, I discussed about the chemical equilibrium. In the third module, I discussed about the chemical kinetics. In the fourth module, I covered the catalysis, catalysts and this is my fifth module and in this module, I am in this lecture, lecture number 25, I am covering chlorine chemistry and disinfection part C. Uh, in the last two, two lectures also, I discussed about chlorine, uh, how we can disinfect uh, the water with chlorine, I discussed about the chemistry of chlorine and also the chloramine formation, the chlorine demand, breakpoint chlorination curve, etc. And in this um, lecture, I will cover the, um, the determination methods that um, lecture content of this um, lecture is shown here, the idometric method for total chlorine determination. And uh, free chlorine and chloramine determination separately. We have seen that uh, um, how the chloramines are being formed. We have also seen that we are using chlorine. Uh, how much chlorine we are adding? How much chlorine is remaining as residual chlorine? How much is present as free cl free chlorine or residual chlorine? Uh, those things are very important. Uh, I have shown you the breakpoint chlorination curve. They are in the y axis, I have shown that um, residual chlorine we have plotted. So, how to know this? That is the main, uh, that is the question today. Na? Uh, and uh, these are very much important because uh, we have to um, apply the proper chlorine dose otherwise uh, if it is in excess then it will be problem and if it is less amount then uh, disinfection will not occur. So, um, this is very important. Now, I will discuss about the methods now. Okay. An iodometric method for total chlorine residual determination. Total chlorine means chlorine free chlorine residual and uh, combined chlorine residual. This total is means both both combined. Okay, how to determine it? The uh, stepwise it is written. The sample water after adjust adjusting the pH at three to four at low pH it has to be done. It is uh, this uh, ex uh, this uh, determination is done at low pH. What is the low pH? This is 3 to 4 pH and how it will be maintained? This is by acetic acid, maintained by acetic acid is treated with excess Ki potassium iodide. So, we have taken some sample say for example, 50 milliliter sample or 100 milliliter sample whatever and then uh, we have to adjust the pH by using acetic acid in this range. After that, we will add uh, Ki in excess amount. Then what will happen? When we add um, Ki, then uh, you see here the reactions uh, from 1 to 5, it is shown chlorine reacts to produce the iodine, then HOCl reacts to form the iodine, OCl minus uh, forms iodine, NH2Cl that is monochloroamine that is produced uh, this the uh, combined chlorine residual. So, it is also forming iodine, 
then dichloroamine it is also forming iodine. So, all this these are all the total chlorine that is why it is written total chlorine all are producing iodine. Now, iodine uh, to determine iodine the uh, quantity way it is producing iodine. So, that how can we determine it is uh, every everybody knows uh, it is the titration with thiosulfate S 2 O 3 sodium thiosulfate Na 2 S 2 O 3 uh, it has to be titrated. And then when it is titrated it is the balanced equation is shown this is the tetrathionate S 4 O 6 2 minus tetrathionate is formed. Okay. And um, so, what is the indicator here? It is the starch, starch is the indicator. So, we all know that for this type of adiabatic titration, we start the reaction, we take the thiosulfate solution in the burette, we take the take the solution where iodine is generated that we take in the um, conical flask and after that we start addition of thiosulfate and um, we have to use the starch as the indicator, but when we will add starch uh, from the beginning or um, after some time or when. So, uh, we all know that um, iodine has the color brown color or uh, if it is concentration is less then it is yellow yellow color then uh, if it is brown color then uh, in the in the beginning we will not add starch, um, we will st uh, we'll start our addition of thiosulfate then slowly slowly the color will be um, means uh, uh, become less intense that means, uh, initially if it is brown then it will slowly slowly become yellow. Then when we see the straw yellow color that means, very faint yellow color then we will add iod uh, the uh, starch indicator oh, and immediately we will see the blue color formation. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so, we have not added in the beginning when lot of iodine is already transformed into iodide then only little amount of iodine is there showing the straw color straw yellow color then we will add the starch ok. And then immediately it will be dark blue color and we will then continue the titration with thiosulfate within 3 4 5 drops the color will discharge that blue color and then that is the end point. Now, the question is why from the beginning we have not uh, added the starch why um, uh, after almost at the end of the uh, 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 titration we have added this. Okay. So, the, there are two, so this is our question, this is our um, home task. Okay. So, uh, this, um, this is a very good question, even I ask the students uh, uh, in the masters level they, they cannot answer properly, what is the reason uh, behind this. If we add in the beginning what will happen that is the, that is the thing. Okay. So, this is the question um, we will discuss may be in the next uh, module uh, this uh, ok. So, calculation calculation we can see here that 2 moles of thiosulfate um, is equivalent to 1 mole of iodine the, you can see the balanced equation. So, 1 mole of iodine and uh, 1 uh, 1 mole of iodine uh, and 1 uh, which is equivalent to 1 mole of chlorine here um, you see 1 mole of iodine is coming from 1 mole of chlorine. So, this is the um, it, it is the uh, means uh, um, beginning of the calculation after that uh, we can write that 1 mole of thiosulfate is equivalent to 0.5 mole of iodine 0.5 mole of chlorine. So, 35.5 gram of chlorine ok. So, 1 mole of thiosulfate means 1 milliliter 1 molar thiosulfate is equivalent to 35.5 milligram because uh, it 1 mole means um, uh, here 1 mole thiosulfate means 1000 milliliter 1 molar thiosulfate, but we are taking 1 milliliter. So, here it is becoming milligram ok gram to milligram and then uh, the molecule now the question is coming. So, this is the basis of the calculation from here you can start and now the molecular weight this is my question the molecular weight of thiosulfate is m say for example, you do not have to calculate ok. Uh, say for example, the molecular weight of thiosulfate is m then what is the equivalent to it this is my question. So, this is the reaction it is going on S 2 O 3 2 moles of S 2 O 3 is giving S 4 O 6 2 minus plus 2 electron ok. This is the reaction that is happening. So, what is the molecular weight of thiosulfate if the uh, what is the equivalent weight of thiosulfate if the molecular weight is m this is also home task ok. Actually you see I am I am giving the answer actually molecular weight and equivalent weight will be the same. 
because here you see two electrons are involved. So, per one electron uh, what is the amount that is equivalent to it. So, per two electron uh, two moles. So, one electron one mole. So, molecular weight and equivalent weight is the same, but uh, when I give this uh, to the um, lab viva then uh, many people uh, most of the students they cannot answer uh, properly. They write uh, m by 2 somebody writes m by 4 like this 2 m ok. So, this is the thing. So, when something is like redox reaction then you have to uh, think about the electron how many electrons are involved in transfer ok. And when you think about the acid then you have to think that how many H uh, is present like H 2 so 4 molecular by 2 H C L molecular by 1 ok. So, because 2 hydrogens are present in uh, in H 2 so 4. So, molecular by 2 will be the equivalent to it for H C L it is 1 hydrogen. So, it is same, but redox reaction is not like that. And for salt, say for example, calcium carbonate, you have seen calcium carbonate, um, the molecular weight is uh, 100, but equivalent to it is 50. Why? Because one calcium is there and in the valence of calcium is 2, so it will be divided by 2, ok. Now, um, so you understand that the iodometric method can be used in low pH condition, it can be used for total, uh, residu total residual chlorine determination, ok. Now, here it is free chlorine and chloramine determination separately. Sometimes we need to have this uh, method no, by DPD method, ok. How it can be done? It is very interesting method. Free, you have to uh, listen carefully. Free chlorine residuals are capable of oxidizing NN diethyl paraffinylene diamine, abbreviated as DPD, to red color, red colored compound, which is an, which is an oxidized product of DPD. So, chlorine you know chlorine is an oxidizing agent. So, DPD is a reagent um, which can be oxidized by chlorine to give a red color ok clear. Now, the pH range should be 6 to 6.5 pH is adjusted by phosphate buffer you know buffer. So, in my first module I explained. So, pH is maintained by using this. Now, the red colored compound is produced it is quantitative to the um, chlorine concentration. So, how much chlorine is there that much oxidized DPD will be formed ok. Now, what you will do this red colored product can oxidize quantitatively ferrous ammonium sulphate which is also known as more salt. Ferrous Fe 2 plus can go to Fe 3 plus right. So, it is oxidized. So, this red colored product which is the oxidized product of DPD can oxidize the ferrous ammonium sulphate or rather you can tell that ferrous ammonium sulphate can reduce this uh, DPD oxidized product that is red colored product ok. And ferrous ammonium sulphate is a primary standard, primary standard. So, you can uh, prepare the standard with known concentration of Fe 2 plus and um, you can titrate the red colored complex that produced in your conical flask say for example and then how much uh, Fe 2 plus is required you can see from the titration then you can easily calculate how much um, actually chlorine was there to oxidize the DPD. Uh, so, it is very uh, nice. So, first to first to sample water an excess amount of DPD is added. So, how much DPD should be added excess, but it will be quantitatively oxidized right. How much chlorine is there according to that it will be oxidized even if you and actually reagent has to be added in excess. Then the solution is titrated with standard ferrous ammonium sulphate solution at the end end point sharp color change from red to colorless is observed ok. This gives a measure of free chlorine. This is a free chlorine because free chlorine only free, free chlorine here and at this condition can um, oxidize uh, DPD to some red colored compound. So, this is uh, the written in a simple way sample water pH adjusted to 6 to 6.5 excess DPD added red colored solution then titrated with standard Fe 2 plus solution colorless endpoint. So, that is the path and the calculation calculation is um, like this chlorine you are you have chlorine free chlorine. So, chlorine uh, it is 
acting as oxidizing agent. So, it is reduced and then uh, Fe 2 plus is um, oxidized when it is oxidizing the uh, when it is um, uh, reducing that uh, DPD oxidized product. So, this is the calculation. Now, free chlorine and chloramine determination separately. Okay. The solution after the free, free chlorine determination is treated with excess Ki. Free chlorine you have already determined. Now, you want to determine the chloramine concentration. So, how will you do it? Okay. It is a mixture. Say, for example, free chlorine is also there, chloramine is also there. So, free chlorine you have already determined. Now, you want to do uh, the combined chlorine, okay. chloramine, combined chlorine. So, how will you do it? So, that is written here uh, step by step. The liver. So, what you will do? The solution after the free chlorine determination by DPD method, it is treated with excess Ki. Then you add Ki there, okay? excess Ki. What will happen? Then uh, so liberated iodine by chloramine. You have seen in the previous slide that um, iodine is generated by chloramine. Okay? Iodine is generated from Ki quantitatively. So, it will iodine will be liberated that liberated iodine can again oxidize DPD. So, liberated iodine will oxidize chloramine will not oxidize DP, liberated iodine will oxidize the DPD okay, to red colored product same reaction, but it is done by iodine and, um, and how iodine is produced iodine is produced from chloramines react after reaction with Ki. Okay. So, then uh, so red colored is produced then again uh, you are titanium with more salt the end product will be colorless same same way like the previous one. So, it will give the measure of chloramines. Okay. Now, if there is monochloramine and dichloramine both then how you can determine it is giving total chloramine, but if you want to uh, do the estimation of mono monochloramine and dichloramine separately then what you will do again kinetics is coming what is there thus if a small amount of Ki is added and the product uh, produce red color is titrated with Fe 2 plus immediately then it gives a measure of monochloramine. Why? I will tell you uh, this is kinetics monochloramine uh, and dichloramine they react the kinetics is different. Okay. Now, after the measurement of monochloramine again add excess Ki then iodine is liberated slowly the liberated iodine produced uh, produces the red color by oxidizing DPD same method, but here slowly produced it is by dichloramine quickly produced monochloramine you have already determined monochloramine then again Ki added you are allowing some time then dichloramine will produce the oxidized DPD then you are doing the same reaction with the iron 2 plus okay? and then you are determining the dichloramine. So, it is basically kinetics depend depending on the kinetics you are measuring monochloramine and dichloramine separately. The liberated iodine produces a red color red color by oxidizing DPD the this red color oxidized DPD is titrated with iron 2 plus it is same, but this time it is dichloramine you are getting. Okay. So, same method you are using to determine DPD is the reagent you are using to determine free chlorine first it is direct no Ki is, is added then you are finishing finished then uh, there dichloramine um, and monochloramine is not coming into picture now you are adding uh, Ki okay then if you add Ki excess Ki then uh, both chloramines together will come but if you add small amount of uh, Ki uh, and immediately you titrate then you will get the monochloramine DPD is there forget about DPD now DPD is there everywhere okay? and now if you do uh, excess amount Ki and uh, allow some time to keep then dichloramine is coming. So, it is a very interesting method free chlorine and chloramine determination separately the same thing it is written in a nutshell chloramines mono and dichloramine excess Ki and excess DPD added red colored product titrated with standard Fe 2 plus colorless end point it is the combined okay. excess uh, so both are reacting okay. excess uh, you have added both are reacting 
it has been observed that oxygen also oxidizes DPD slowly. Oxygen is also an oxidizing agent right. So, it can oxidize DPD also. This reaction becomes faster in presence of metal ions. Again, if metal ion is there, it catalyzes. So, how to resist it? How to make the reaction of oxygen with DPD slower? By adding EDTA, because all the comp you know the EDTA very good complexing agent, it can complex with metal ions. So, you if you can complex this metal ions with EDTA, then it is no more a catalyst, it cannot act as a catalyst. So, this reaction will be slowed down. So, oxygen will not hamper because titration in nitrogen atmosphere or uh, some other inert atmosphere is not possible. Okay. Oxygen you have to allow, okay. but uh, you can do this way then uh, minimized, error is minimized. How to overcome this problem? I have not written the answer, but I told the answer. So, the whole method is based on different kinetics of DPD oxidation. DPD oxidation by free chlorine fast, DPD oxidation by chloramine slow, DPD oxidation by iodine fast, oxidation of iodine by monochloramine is faster than that of dichloramine. So, you have used all these things in this measurement. Okay. Other methods are also there orthotoluidine method, this is a old method colorimetric or spectrophotometric which is colorimetric you can extend it to spectrophotometric also by doing the calibration curve by using the spectrophotometer, okay. but colorimetric is just color you produce and color you compare different colors you produce with different concentration then you compare with the your um, solution with your sample solution after formation of color that is the colorimetric spectrophotometer means you have to standard curve you have to prepare and then uh, with the sample also you have to develop the color and then measure the absorbance value and put it in the calibration curve then get the concentration. It is a finer method and more accurate. Okay, so, how can you do colorimetric method ortho toluidine not toluidine, toluidine is something else toluidine ortho toluidine was used as a colorimetric indicator for chlorine residual you see the year 1909. So, Phelps very old method free chlorine can oxidize the ortho toluidine to form a halo quinone. Quinone I told that sometimes it has color having yellow color in acidic media. Okay, free chlorine can do this color standards this is done by this color stand why these are important you know that time spectrophotometer all those things were not there. So, um, simple methods are used, but because chlorination has started already. So, how to determine the how much chlorine you will use how much chlorine is there residual chlorine. So, this is color standards. So, stand some standards you can prepare say for example, uh, with known concentration of chlorine you add the reagents and some color is developed then you seal it then this is a standard. So, your sample you do the same thing and compare the color. So, uh, comparison with standard color sometimes disc also uh, we have used this chloroscope some disc okay, disc has colored disc you put it there your prepared uh, solution uh, the it is giving some color. So, you match with the discs and then you will know what is the concentration. These are very used for field test because in the field you cannot carry the instrument only the test kit is very good to carry small kit you just go there you mix it there on the spot and then you compare it with the disc or with the standards it is easy there, but can be estimated spectrophotometrically also to have quantitative measurement of chlorine concentration same method but you can extend it to, to towards the spectrophotometry but it has low accuracy orthotoledine method is not very uh, accurate method you can use it um, sometimes uh, that much accuracy is not needed also so but you can use it but it is not very accurate method but one thing is important orthotoledine is known to be toxic substance now it is known now we know that ortho now we are very much concerned about our um, means health na and um, also green chemistry approach i told you the green chemistry approach in catalysis so uh, toxic substances we do not want to use 
because ultimately it will go to the environment and we do not want that and it has the carcinogenic potential it is cancer uh, carcinogenic uh, compound. So, uh, if it is carcinogenic then again we have to be more cautious right and that is why it is not used anymore in the standard method you know standard method there is a book where all the standard methods are there for determining so many things very huge book um, big book. But you know that if you say for example, you develop some method which you think that it can be a standard method worldwide it will be used then it takes so much time uh, you have to first apply that you want it to be a standard method then it will be verified by so many labs and so many times and by different people and like this. So, it takes 5 years 7 years time to actually to say that ok this method is very good. And uh, now again the toxicity of the reagent and uh, reproduce it everything is there. So, um, it has it is no more used in the standard method because it is toxic it is not that accurate also, but it is a very old method it has the history you see the year 1909 okay? um, and also field, uh, field application also field test also as a kit it was used for a long time. Now, there are some questions uh, in this module uh, 5 uh, I picked up some questions how to determine the amount of bleaching powder required to disinfect a water sample. How much uh, bleaching powder you will use how to know breakpoint chlorination curve you have to draw you have to do some experiments you have to vary the dose in different containers you take the water same same volume water you add the different doses of chlorine keep it for some time then measure the residual chlorine. Uh, and then you uh, um, prepare the graph then you will know how much is the demand then you apply that type of chlorine dose to be in the safe side ok. Uh, what is the demand chlorine demand chlorine applied minor residual chlorine then uh, there are so many compounds you have seen chlorine this is 0 state then chloride then HOCl OCl minus ClO3 minus ClO2 minus ClO2 gas. So, what are the names? and what is the oxidation state of chlorine there. Uh, though this is very uh, this is very interesting and explain why addition of chlorine tends to decrease the pH of water and uh, hypochlorous increases the pH that I already answered. What is the relative significance of free chlorine residual and chloramine residual in water disinfection practice. I told you during transport the residual uh, combined chlorine residual is very important is not it that is uh, chloramine residual and free chlorine residual although it is better disinfectant, but it is uh, dissipated fast. Now, references uh, same book Saur McCarty and uh, AK Dash that is environmental chemistry with green chemistry all the methods they are written very nicely in standard methods also you can consider there is a very good standard method book water and waste water analysis. So, they are also all the methods uh, you can consult, but here in these books also it is nicely written you can read it thoroughly if you want to do the experiments if you want to measure the things chlorines or nitrogen containing compounds like nitrites ammonia nitrate then you can read these books to have thorough knowledge. And as a conclusion I can tell from this lecture in the disinfection practice it is important to determine the total chlorine residual. The determination method is described the methods to determine the free chlorine and combined chlorine, chlorine separately are also described there are different methods you can uh, choose which one you will apply thank you.